Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to stack and finish a wedding cake. Now, when it comes to stacking, a lot of people have different theories on what you should and shouldn't use. I personally like using uh, just normal plastic straws. You can get them at McDonald's or Starbucks. Straws are actually awesome. Just steal a bunch when you go in for your coffee. Um, I use those as my internal dowels between tiers, and then I use one wooden central dowel. Always, 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 always use a central dowel because you never know when you'll have to slam on the brakes in the delivery, and if you don't have a dowel, your cake is gonna be on the floor. So, with this, the tier sizes I have, I've got a nine, a seven, and a five. So, my general rule for how many straws you put in each tier is however many inches the tier above it is, is the number of straws you put in that tier. So, since I've got my nine here, my next tier size is a seven, I'll need seven straws. Sometimes if I'm feeling like, it's a double barrel tier, which this one is. I might round up and do eight. I'm gonna go ahead and do eight for this one, just in case. But a lot of people, also, I've seen it on TV, people putting 30 straws in a cake. You don't need to do that, it's completely unnecessary. So two, four, six, seven, eight. All right. And I like to do mine in a star pattern. So I'll do five and then I'll keep moving in. All right. So I've got my straws placed. The next thing I wanna do is go ahead and put, I've just got a piece of parchment because one of the things about fondant and buttercream cakes is they tend to stick to each other when you try to slice them. So this is purely for ease of your client to be able to cut their cake without pulling all the fondant off when they wanna use it. Notice it fits perfectly over all the straws. So just kind of tear that guy down. And because it's parchment, it will come off clean. And then I wanna just double check and make sure all my straws are level. Looks pretty good to me. You can never, ever be too annoyingly obnoxious about leveling your cakes. And so now we'll go ahead and grab the next tier, which is our super barrel. This one already has straws in the bottom. It's got seven straws to support the seven inches. So we're just putting the five in the top for the top tier. Come here. These are always a lot of fun to move. And so I'm using just a normal burger flipper to move my tiers. Always don't take it out until you've got it centered because it's a lot easier to move. And the parchment actually helps you be able to move the cake more easily while you're trying to make sure it's in the middle, which is always the fun game. That looks pretty good to me. And then like magic. And so now, once again, I'll do the same thing on the top with five straws. I'm gonna take that all the way down. Mark it with your scissors. Pull it back up. And then use that to measure all the other straws. Four and five. And then one, two, three, four, and five. Again, I've got another parchment paper that I'm gonna put over those straws. Check that everything's nice and level. And so for this tier, since the next tier is my top and this one does not have a topper for me to hide a hole for the dowel, I'm gonna go ahead and put my central dowel in right now. So I got this guy sharpened on one side already. And I'm gonna use it to kind of measure and just kind of eyeball it. You want about three, two to three inches above the top of the cake so it will go in the center of that guy and hold it all together without damaging the top. Got my handy dandy cutters. such. And then I just use an X-Acto knife to sharpen them. You can, of course, use a pencil sharpener. But for me, I can never find a pencil sharpener when I need it. Just like such. So now you've got two ends that are sharp. So now we're going to go ahead and hammer in this dowel. 
You want it to go all the way through all the cake and both boards so it's flush with the top of the turntable expander. So usually you can start just doing it by hand and then you'll need to go in with your hammer. And you'll actually hear it. That's the sound. You'll hear it when it hits the top of the turntable. It'll make that kind of like hollow ping. Hear that? That's how you know you're all the way down where you need to be. And so then from here, I've already got a hole cut in the bottom of this guy into its foam core. If you want to see real quick, I'll show you my hole. So it's just enough in the center of the board so that the dowel, the central dowel will fit through it. And then you just take it, drop it down. You've got a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it's centered. That's better. And then I always use my fondant smoother just to give it one good push. Buff out. And so now to finish this, we want to go ahead and gunge our edges because I've got that little bit of gap and I want to make this as seamless a cake as possible. So I've got my gunge in my piping bag with my two and a half tip. And I'm just going to fill in that edge. So then using my large gray shaper, the dark gray, the firms, and I've got my cup of milk and vodka here. Because I always like to put a little something on my tools just to kind of lubricate them. And then just very lightly. Go through and just push that gun in between the tiers. Scraping away the excess. So you get a nice, neat, clean finish. There's our wedding cake all stacked, gunged, and finished and ready to be decorated. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to stack a wedding cake. Trust me, this is the most secure, awesome stack you'll ever have. So I hope you guys learned a lot and we'll see you next time.